Um, so yeah, my name is Elissa Goss. Um, I'm a senior at Evergreen, and um, I had the, the the deep honor and the the privilege to be able to travel this past fall to the West Bank and Israel as part of an interfaith peace builders um, delegation with the Corey family. Um, and before I get into a little bit of what we saw there and, and how that 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 really impacted how I view the importance of of this work, so I also just want to say um, that we're also on occupied land here. Um, Squaxin, Duwamish, Nisqually, Puyallup, um, Chehalis, and that um, we can't talk about Israel-Palestine without also talking about our own process of colonization here in the United States, and that we have been normalized here. Um, our presence here right now in this park is a normalization of colonization. Um, and that's what we're fighting against. Um, and that's what we have to keep fighting against. And, that process um, and how that happened. Um, and so I, I went, I wanted to go because I, I, I truly believe that there's a, a, a really important power in witnessing. Um, because I know here in the States, it's, we see this too, it's so easy to ignore suffering. Um, it get, especially given various positions of privilege. Um, and I also went because as I'm a Unitarian Universalist and one of our principles is um, justice, equity, and compassion in all human relations. And um, when I got back, it really struck me that principle because it doesn't say neutrality, <laughs> equity, and compassion in all um, human relations. It says justice. And what does that really mean when we talk about justice? Um, and what I found going over there is that, you know, we, we like... I think we'll often hear when we're maybe arguing or talking with our friends and our family about Israel-Palestine of like, peace, dialogue. I hate that word. Um, well, no, really, I like that word, but not how it's used because that's really been co-opted um, into not talking about the daily systematic um, strangling of, of Palestinian life there. And it's, it's not just the rockets and the bombs and the housing demolitions. It's that every day saying, you know, in East Jerusalem, oh, you can't build a second part to your house. There's a building code against that. Or, oh, you have to pay $10,000 more than the general Israeli to do that. Oh, you want water? Oh, you're in the wrong zone. You can't have water hooked up to your house. You're in the wrong zone. Oh, you want to go to court? Oh, you can't go to that court. You have to go to the special Israeli military court because you're in this zone. And, oh, you want to get food? Oh, sorry, we've stopped all food deliveries to that part of the West Bank because there was maybe a potential terrorist threat, so we're just not going to deliver food and medicine to you. Oh, you want to... It's just like every time you're trying to do your daily acts of survival, there is some law, some code, some court ruling saying you can't, you can't just live and survive. And that is ethnic cleansing. It's not just the violence, it's the systematic bureaucracy. And bureaucracy can be a form of violence, and it is. And that's what Israel is using every day, is that systematic bureaucracy saying no to life. And that's what we're fighting against. And we have to look at that here in our own communities. Um, it's, we can't just focus on rockets and bombs and violence. We have to look at the law, and we have to recognize that those laws hold a space for that violence. It allows that violence to happen. That that's, and it's sad that we wake up, we, we tend to only wake up when there's an, a physical outbreak of violence, but we have to look at what are those quiet moments when there are city councils and there are governments and there are courts that do they just slide those lines on paper and you have this, you know, this piece of paper that defines your ability to live, and that is wrong, and that's what we're really fighting against when we talk about ending the occupation, is ending that bureaucracy, ending that violence of everyday suffering. Um, and so I also want to say that there's, uh, I think, um, if you ever so ever need like our presentation, there's a, a group of us that live here, and we'd be more than willing to come to an organization um, a faith community, anything, and, and speak about that because that's often is just overlooked so much. And um, I think something else that really impacted me um, was seeing the nonviolent resistance um, of the the various communities we visited because they're they're in the courts all the time, and having to go to court and having to go to trial that is a form of nonviolent resistance. So when people say, "Oh, the you know the rockets from Palestine," and it's like, "Excuse me." Like, every single day they are resisting nonviolently. Every single day. How dare you call them violent? Because it's not, and it's not like that. And the youth, I think, was really 
was really saddening was just seeing youth having to grow up with being told that just because of who you are, somehow you're going to be more violent or somehow who, just who you are and who your identity and who your culture and your family and your history is. And we should never, ever be, uh, be telling a child that they can't be who they are and they can't practice their culture and their heritage. That is wrong. We wouldn't stand for that here in our own culture, even though we do that here in the United States as well in our communities. And we definitely shouldn't be supporting that elsewhere. Because I think when we think when we're talking about policy, I'm going to think about these are generations of suffering. This isn't just happening right now. It's been happening and it will continue to happen. And um, I just I just want to say that. Um, it's really important too to come together like this because when we witness each other and we see each other, we can support each other because it's so easy to get in those conversations with people and you just feel like a block. You're just like, how could I possibly explain this better so that you could get it? And we are each other's resources and we know with together, you know, one on one we might know a little, but together we know a lot. Um, and so we need to also look around, meet people today, find out what our resources are to educate each other because we each touch different parts of our communities in different ways and we can help push it a little more. Um, but we have to support each other and rely on each other. So don't think that when you're in that conversation with someone and you're arguing about Israel, Palestine and Palestinian rights that you're alone because just remember today and remember that like we have each other to, to rely on and to lean back on and to learn from. So thank you so much for being here.